as men how are we supposed to learn how to flirt and handle rejection in a healthy way? Like anything else in life, it takes practice. You want to learn how to be a better batter you take 10. 0, 0, 0 pitches. My advice to you is to not let your initial attraction to a woman build into an unhealthy obsession. By this I mean, don't put her on a pedestal. Resist the urge to daydream about raising a family and sitting on your porch together in your old age. If you are interested in a girl find out how she feels about you before you let your fantasies take you to a place where the possible rejection will hurt you. I like this advice. However, as a person with anxiety, sometimes it's actually best to let those daydreams play out in your head. This is a good practice to really understand what you want. Daydream about that one attractive woman you saw earlier, no problem. But just understand that you like the idea of having someone with you in that particular context, not that woman you saw earlier in the day. I think it's important to be real with yourself and not suppress valid wants of intimacy in a relationship. This will only lead into toxic self-destruction otherwise. I'm speaking from experience. Well it's really easy to slip and lost control over this thoughts. I learned it by understanding that not everyone is going to be attracted to me. I'm not attracted to every girl so when I flip it why would every girl I talk to be attracted to me? Once I really started understanding it and stopped beating myself up so much for it. Just because you were rejected by that person doesn't mean you're worthless or there isn't anyone out there for you. It just means you weren't what that person was looking for. Edit. Grammar. I don't think that there are many men who believe that everyone is attracted to them. Yet, there are a lot of men, especially on Reddit, who say that no one is attracted to them. And this circumstance, that you are essentially completely flying blind when it comes to your dating prospects, is a big issue for many men. It keeps them in a state of ambiguity, where they don't know if they should move forward or not. In fact, a clear no is the best outcome you can hope for since it is so unambiguous. In short, most men know when someone says no. Whether or not someone says yes is usually much more unclear. The best I ever felt was when I got a clear no after weeks of stringing me along. I don't do it anymore now that I'm older. But when I was a teenager slash young 20s, it can be really easy to agonize over it. Once I got the no though it was like a huge weight lifted. At least I knew where I stood. How to flirt can be wildly different depending on the person you're going for. How to handle rejection isn't so much about how to handle it, but how to think about it. It's an absurd thought to think everyone will be into you. Even the most stereotypically perfect person faces rejection. Rejection in itself is nothing to be ashamed of. It's much less talked about or agreed on, but most women handle rejection quite badly because they are not used to it either. Perhaps it should be covered in schools during social education. It's much less talked about or agreed on, but most women handle rejection quite badly because they are not used to it either. This, in my experience a lot of that s about men, being creepy or unhealthy about it goes out the window the moment the situation is reversed and a lot of women will do the exact same creepiness egg is, if not much worse simply because the average woman isn't really socialized to respect men's boundaries. Some women take it on the chin and move on, like a well-adjusted adult. Others get upset and violent. We all saw the recent video of a girl trying to kiss a guy, then hitting him because he refused. Others make allegations. There was a thread today and threw off my chest about it with many stories of similar outcomes. JFC these comments are so fucked up. The rejection part aside, because of the associated territory, the comments mostly prove Op's point. I thought it was just me at first lol. No one taught me how to do it. I just kind of learned to do it by myself, by talking to my female classmates. I mostly kept to my all-male friend group in school, and I found that most girls in school in my year were either indifferent or hostile towards me despite me not doing anything to warrant that kind of reaction from them. One example that sticks to my mind is I was just walking to the bus when this girl in my year walking in the same direction at the same pace stopped and gave me this intense look of disgust like she just stepped in a turd. 
I had never talked to this girl, and never did anything to deserve that kind of reaction her, and it bothered me a lot, that she seemed to have such contempt for me no reason. I know it may seem silly to you, but back then that experience really hurt me, and I didn't know how to handle it. When I was a girl in middle and high school, I know that many guys had awful hygiene, like you would walk beside them, and your eyes would water, because they smelled horrible. These guys probably didn't know why I glared at them whenever they tried to talk to me. But I remember a couple of times guys literally made me gag, and I probably made them feel bad whenever I avoided them. This isn't to say that you personally had bad hygiene, but to mention that the reactions you provoked might have been for reasons you just don't attribute to yourself. Maybe the girl you mention heard a rumor about you. Maybe you smelled bad. Or maybe she just thought you were someone else she really really didn't like. Letting go of it is important, because letting rejection affect you to such a degree isn't healthy. Backslash backslash, flirting a gentleman first and foremost strives to make people feel comfortable in their presence. That's the single unifying concept in all manners and grace. Backslash backslash, rejection on feedance is not knowing you'll never be rejected, but rather knowing you'll be okay when it happens. How do you make someone feel comfortable in a way that signals your interest is more than friendship? Non-aggressively. With wit and charm. Flatteringly. Sincerely. By making yourself vulnerable. And by making it their option. With no negative consequences for any choice. I was always taught by my father, the worst thing that can happen, is she says no. But she can't say yes unless you try. Apostrophe. The worst thing that can happen, is she says no. That's not true. Rejection is always going to sting. But you can make it sting less by not tying your sense of self-worth with whether lots of women want to sleep with you, or even whether one woman wants to, as a whole. I think both men and women struggle with rejection, but it's men that are more likely to experience it. I've had to say no to women before and either there, and then they'll react negatively, or they'll spread rumors about you slash talk behind your back. It's tough. So much of it is coaching. Meaning each individual guy needs personalized feedback. Who's qualified to give this feedback? Though, historically, if you asked an older, married man how to treat a woman, his experience with building and maintaining a relationship would be relevant. Courtship has changed a lot in the last few decades. Though, personally, I could never have learned how to talk to women from just one source. It took years of trial and error and opening up about my feelings to a variety of different people. It also helped that I read a lot of Me Too articles with an open mind. Op people are trying to blame you for your shitty behavior and supposed inability to handle rejection. 1. You haven't actually described any shitty behavior on your end. Just bewilderment at what you're supposed to be doing. But it seems like, rather than take it out on others you've internalized it and kept to yourself. That should be acknowledged. 2. The advice telling you to handle rejection by simply saying okay. No problem is true in general. But it misses dealing with the way you were rejected as a teen. The way that girl looked at you in disgust was mean. And while it's not healthy, it's not invalid that it's stuck with you for so long. Experiences from that age leave impressions. Particularly when no counter examples of how the world views you come along to mitigate them. That should be acknowledged too. And yes, society does have more responsibility to help men navigate dating, romance, love, relationships, family, sex, etc are not things we are entitled to from any individual person, but they are definitely things we are all entitled to desire, and given that those are near universal and natural desires, and that they are incredibly important to our social fabric. We would do well as culture to help those for whom it comes less naturally, like we do with other skills, including social skills. Your observations and feelings are valid opus. I used to go to bars with a mate of mine, and if we see two or more women walk in and sit at a table nearby I would approach them ask them nicely if they would like to join my buddy and myself. If they said no all I said back air okay no worries enjoy the rest of your night ladies and walk away within half hours they would come over and drink with us all because I took the rejection with a grain of salt. I think the biggest problem young men and most older men suffer from is the fear of being rejected. If you can overcome that fear then you will be okay and you will find a nice woman.
I think the question is a flawed one. I think handling rejection in a healthy way is just an aspect of a well-rounded personality, which in turn comes from observing healthy interactions in our formative years. If we observe rejection being dealt with by unhealthy coming strategies, we are subconsciously assimilating that method without the understanding that this is not a good thing to do. It's not to say that people can't learn better ways of dealing with these things, but it has to be a conscious choice to do so, rather than an implicit one. Observation of your own actions and reflection is the only way to go. It's a simple concept that is difficult to learn. Nobody owes you anything. Treat people how you'd like to be treated, regardless of how they treat you. So flirt, which is basically just talking to people you're interested in and trying to get them interested in you. If they reject you, move on without being butthurt. HTTPS slash slash yow to b slash n 7th mej x w c watch this, let Boomhoy show you the way. Well, I learned my social skills through a series of blog posts online, up until very recently. Children would go to finishing schools which were basically institutions that taught how to behave with etiquette and grace. It was generally something you did if you came from money, but authors like Emily Post made the lessons accessible to common folks in a series of books. You can still get Post's books online. The ways to handle rejections and such will be old-fashioned and reflective of the time Post lived in. But the lessons would still be valuable. We have created this weird society where people just kind of expect each other to know and understand social interactions. But then we're uncomfortable just explaining things to people when we see them doing something wrong. I blame the disconnect on the bizarre amount of insecurity people have today, because the problem extends far beyond just flirting and romantic engagements. People, young men especially, categorically do not have the social skills necessary to navigate most interactions in a healthy and productive manner. I'd really love for finishing schools to become a thing again, and for the masses. Even making it an elective in schools could work, or an after school club. Some schools do things like that, especially in areas where a large percentage of boys lack a father figure at home. Honestly, just take no as an answer the first time it's given, and keep it pushing. No hard feelings. That's the best way to handle rejection. Don't keep pestering girls, or try to convince them to change their mind. That's all really true points. But that's about how to recognize rejection. I think he might be asking more about how to bounce back ready to try again, after getting a streak of those no's. What did you miss out on? Social interaction as a child. As a child you learn that not everybody wants to be your friend. And that's okay. You probably don't want to be friends with every child at school either. That's when you should learn this. One kid doesn't want to be your friend, or doesn't want to play with you. It might hurt but just go find some other kids to play with. Don't dwell on the ones who rejected you. Learning it now as you're older might a little more difficult, but the same basic principle applies. If you approach a woman and she's not interested, it might hurt, but just say no problem and go on with your day. You can still process it mentally. You can still be conscious of how you feel about it, but you don't have to do that in front of her. She doesn't need to see that and she doesn't owe you anything but you don't owe her anything either, unless you've been rude to them. You don't need to apologize for it. Then just go away and think about what happened. But don't overthink it. Did you say something offensive? Did you say say something stupid? Did you have spinach stuck between your teeth? Be honest and, if the answer is no, then forget about it. If the answer is yes, learn from it and do better next time. Flirting might be a bit more tricky to get better at. But the most basic way of starting is by talking to them like they are people. Not as some species you need to conquer. Not as some trophy you need to win. Just people. There's a few minor differences. But ultimately start by talking to them like you would. As if you've just met a guy. From there you can start thinking about getting better at flirting. But you need to have the basics of social interaction down before you should even be thinking of that. Get comfortable talking to people first. Once you're there, you start to understand more what will make people feel comfortable. What might make somebody laugh? The real issue with nice guys isn't just about how they react when they are rejected, but that no amount of logic from anybody else will ever convince them that they are anything other than a victim. 
I'm sure many of us at some point will have reacted badly to something. Whether it's a rejection from a woman or anything else in life, the difference between being a normal guy who messed up and a nice guy is being able to realize you were being a dick and becoming a better person going forward. You can literally see it happening with so many guys as well. Women don't talk to you unless you're over 6 foot. Women only go for the jackass fuck boys. Women don't want somebody smart and caring. Bollocks. Women don't want you because you have major insecurities and rather than dealing with them and growing as a person, you've decided half of the planet is to blame for it and nothing could possibly be your fault. Hey. So everyone doesn't get access to resources slash life skills that ideally a child growing up in a healthy environment should have. Not to mention the individual level complexities which may hinder those learnings despite of having the right access. There are a million examples demonstrating this idea in the areas of access to education, health and career etc. In that sense, no one person has it all. All of us have to constantly look for opportunities to learn and grow. It might be true to a certain extent that parents slash society could have failed in helping a vulnerable child, resulting in deep psychological slash other issues. However, as adults, we don't get to constantly blame other people for our grievances. Going by your logic no murderer slash criminal should be punished for their actions cause society didn't teach them everything they had to learn to become decent human beings isn't a sound rationale. While psychology and other childhood experiences or the lack thereof may explain the why of a certain person's behavior, in the end we all as individuals are accountable for our actions which lead to consequences. We don't get to make others suffer for our own lack of learning. That's just cowardice. Instead, you could choose the path of individual responsibility. Good luck. I'll be honest. I'm a fat guy and getting picked on growing up hardened me to rejection. So I just run it like a numbers game. If you put yourself out there you have a better chance of finding the people who do want you. Rejection is just part of the social contract. You shouldn't feel entitled to another human's attraction. In life you get rejected from a job. From a particular school you wanted to get into. It's no different. When it comes to woman some woman will like you some will not it's life what are you going to do if a woman rejects you? There's no right way to flirt. Just treat someone that you're interested in like a person and try to get to know them. Don't play games and just treat them with respect. There's no guarantee that someone will be interested. You either click or you don't. The nice guys pop up because they call themselves nice guys and do everything not out of kindness but because they expect something back in return. Usually you figure out how to flirt by watching others do it, and with trial and error. Being emotionally mature enough to handle rejection is something that should come with age. You learn how to flirt by talking about it with other men, reading about it in books, and reading online articles. Then you go out and practice it, over and over again. You should also be able to flirt out the bad advice from the good ones. The best way to handle rejection is to learn humility and how to let things go. Then go out and get rejected a bunch of times. I just keep in mind that no one owes me anything in the end. No one is entitled to someone else's time and energy. If I flirt with someone and they turn me down, it's okay. I just say okay, thanks anyway and make a graceful exit. As others have said, it takes practice. Ask out people, even if you're sure they'll say no, then practice taking the L and leaving with dignity, it gets easier. I think it's an equally big problem that women hardly ever approach men. How much training do you need to handle rejection well, you just say okay, thanks or whatever is appropriate to the situation and move on. I think a lot of the challenges people face over rejection come from getting invested in the idea beforehand or building expectations that are then not met.